up you guys, it's Nassim here. Now today, I will be giving you guys a very special look at the brand new iPhone 13. But before I give you guys a deeper look into the specs and the depth of the phone as a whole, the first thing that we have to do is unbox this thing, right? So here it is you guys, the iPhone 13. All right you guys, so the first thing that I noticed when I was unboxing the iPhone 13 was the beautiful white aesthetic that Apple has been using on their iPhone boxes since the first generation iPhone. And the only differences that I noticed between then and now was that one, the box is much smaller because the newer iPhones do not come with a charging brick. So you will have to buy a USB type C charging brick if you don't already have one. And two, the updated picture on the box representing what this year's iPhone will look like from the back. Like on the front, the first differences that I was able to see between this year's version and last year's version was that the cameras are now diagonal instead of vertical. But besides that, we still have that same still shot of the back of the iPhone. Also, another difference that I noticed was that around almost half of the iPhone, you can see a little bit of shade in order to make the colors pop more. And you can tell even more around the Apple logo with its darker tint. Now, moving on to the sides of the box, you can see that Apple has kept this aesthetic going by making the iPhone text color oriented, like whatever color you get is what color the side text will be. And next up, looking at the back of the box, we can see all of the extra information that Apple has displayed, not only about what's inside the box, but all types of information like the storage, the color, the RAM, and all types of other information regarding your iPhone. And when we open the box, the first thing that we can see is the back of the iPhone, just like on the front cover. And when we look at the back of the iPhone, the first thing that I noticed was that the two cameras on the back not only are diagonal, but they also are much bigger compared to last year's version. And this will definitely give me higher expectations because there are more sensors due to its bigger size. And another thing that I noticed about the camera was that the material around the lenses are much more like a glass material giving it a very clean aesthetic that complements the beautiful colors. Now moving on to the front of the device, when we take the paper off the screen, the first thing that I noticed was that the notch on the iPhone 13 series is indeed skinnier. Now I myself am a little disappointed that they didn't get rid of it as a whole, but it does help to decrease the size. And looking at the size of the iPhone 13, we can see the mute switch, the up and down volume rockers, the SIM ejection tray, and also the stripes that match the aesthetic, making the sides look much cleaner and complements the matte texture. And on the other side of the phone, we have the power button and the continuation of the side stripes. And on the top, we have nothing. And on the bottom, there's the USB type C port, along with the circular speakers, like on last year's version. So now that we've had a good look at the quote unquote, newer physical appearance of the iPhone 13, we can now move on to what's in the rest of the box, starting with the design by Apple made in California booklet that has all sorts of paperwork, starting with the instruction manuals to the SIM ejection tool, all the way to the iconic Apple logo stickers. And once we get the booklet out of the way, all that's left in the box is the lightning to USB-C cable. And again, I say, if you decide to get the iPhone 13, you will have to buy the USB type C charging brick, which will be an extra $30. Now, just like on the iPhone 13 mini, the regular iPhone 13 has the exact same five colors, starting with the product red, starlight, midnight, blue, and pink. And the color that I have is the pink that I must say looks very nice, especially when it's in the sunlight. Like as you can see here, the pink really pops out and the glass camera bump gives it a little more professional feel. Also on the sides, we can see that beautiful pink matte finish that looks a little more cleaner than the glass back. And one thing that I feel Apple should have done to the regular 13 series was give us a matte back option because it not only will make it look better, but it will also make it look different because this is the same material scheme that was on the iPhone 12 and 12 mini. Now, when it comes to the cameras on the iPhone 13, we have the exact same 12 megapixel wide and ultra wide system that we have on the 12 and 12 mini. And like I said, when I was unboxing the phone, the 12 megapixel cameras are much bigger in comparison to the iPhone 12 and 12 mini because Apple had to put new hardware into these cameras due to the fact that they now have pretty significant features like cinematic mode and slightly better zoom. And right here, you guys, you can see some sample photos that I have taken throughout my day. And based on my first impressions, I actually really like the improvements of the cameras. The photos were very clear, especially with great lighting. The colors popped out very well without being too much. 
and it was even able to perform well in not so great lighting. Now when it comes to the size of the iPhone 13, it has the exact same height, weight, and even depth as the iPhone 12 with 5.18 inches in height, 2.53 inches in width, and 0.30 inches in depth. And honestly, I myself have never had any problems when it comes to the size of the iPhone 12 or 13 because they have always fitted well in my hands, they weren't too big, and they never were a problem when it came to comfort of holding. And the only difference when it came to the physicality of the 12 and 13 was that the 13 was indeed heavier than the 12, but not by that much. The iPhone 13 is 174 grams, while the iPhone 12 is 164 grams. And when holding the 13 in my hand, I could definitely tell the difference, but it's not heavy to the point where it's distracting, so it didn't bug me. Next up, something I was very fond of when it came to the iPhone 13 was the 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR display that was surprisingly a little bit better than last year. And I say surprisingly because I thought that Apple hit its display ceiling when it came to the cheaper iPhones, but the iPhone 13 really shocked me. It looked really vibrant without seeming too washed out. And whenever I would game on it, the display really gave me an immersive feel because not only was it a beautiful looking display, it also was very big, so I was very happy with it. And the only thing about the display that left me a little disappointed was the fact that Apple did not make this 120 hertz. But again, I say Apple can make 60 hertz screens look really good, so I wasn't too disappointed. Now, when it comes to storage, the iPhone 13 has three options, starting with 128 gigs, 256 gigs, and 512 gigs worth of storage. And like I said in my previous 13 mini video, I am very happy that Apple decided to retire the 64 gig storage option because I feel like in today's age, apps, photos, and videos are taking up more storage than ever. So 128 gigs is the best minimum for a phone in 2021. And last but not least, the additional specs that the iPhone 13 has to offer is a very powerful A15 Bionic chip, just like on the 13 Pro and Pro Max. It also is water and dust resistant and can last six meters up to 30 minutes. And last but not least, it has a battery that lasts up to 17 hours of video playtime. But I will further test this out in my full review. And let me know you guys, which phone are you more likely to get? The iPhone 13 or the iPhone 13 mini? Don't forget to comment down below. And if you guys made it to the end of this video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe. It will be very appreciated. And as far as social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.